Hello, in this video I'll be introducing you to some important keywords related to motion. The first of these, displacement. Here is a map of London and the blue line represents the route of the London Marathon. The London Marathon is 42 kilometres long. That is the distance that the athletes travel from Greenwich all the way around this route here, back on themselves, round this loop a couple of times, and then out to the west and down the Mall, 42 kilometres. But what is their displacement? To measure the displacement, we work out how far apart the beginning and end points are, and we take the length here as the crow flies, giving us a displacement of 10.6 kilometres. So for the same journey, the distance is 42 kilometres, the displacement is 10.6 kilometres. It's also important to note the difference between average speed and instantaneous speed. This is Usain Bolt. In 2009, he ran 100 metres in a time of 9.58 seconds. To calculate average speed, we simply say that speed equals distance over time. In this case, 100 divided by 9.58, giving us an average speed of 10.4 meters per second. What would have happened if instead of measuring the time for the entire race, we instead measured the time for the first 50 meters? Then we'd have divided 50 meters by whatever that time was, and we'd have a different average speed. What if we'd just done the first 10 meters, or the first five meters, or just one meter? What if we chose the shortest possible distance that we could accurately measure the time of, and use that to work out the athlete's speed? Well, that gives us the instantaneous speed. So we can see here that although Usain Bolt's average speed was 10.4 meters per second, his actual speed, his instantaneous speed at any given point along the race, was different. At the beginning of the race, his instantaneous speed is zero because he hasn't set off yet. For the first nearly 40 metres, Usain Bolt is accelerating. He reaches a maximum speed at around 80 metres per second and then very slightly slows down as he approaches the finish line. Another example of where average speed and instantaneous speed are relevant is with speed cameras. Speed cameras are triggered by detecting the instantaneous speed of a car that is passing it using a radar gun. If the speed camera thinks that the car is driving over the speed limit, it will trigger two photographs being taken a short time apart. The markings on the road allow us to measure how far the car has moved in the time between these photographs and therefore to work out the average speed of the car as it drove through this speed camera zone. So the speed camera is triggered by instantaneous speed, but the evidence provided by the speed camera records the average speed. Finally, acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which an object gains speed or velocity. It can be calculated using the equation acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by the change in time. This picture shows a drag racer which has a very high acceleration. It goes from zero to a very high speed in a very short amount of time. A lorry would have a much lower acceleration because it takes longer for it to reach the same speed.